What's going on fellas? What we're looking at here is my 20 cubic foot per minute air compressor that I've built. This thing is a monstrosity for sure, but it's gonna get the job done. It needs a little work, I just ain't got time. It needs a couple more struts it looks like. <laughs> but at any rate, this thing will fill up an air tank in like two minutes flat, man. I'm full bore on the air and it's still filling the tank up at light speed. So this is the 2.5 megawatt burner that I've been working on. It can do a lot more than that, but we're going for 2.5 megawatt with a blue flame here. We're running at almost six cubic foot per minute. So I got about $15 worth of vegetable oil here. I don't have any waste vegetable oil. So we're gonna see how well this thing will burn this kind of oil, because we're gonna try and get some restaurants to run this machine. So I'm gonna dump three gallons in this tank. There is some residual diesel in the lines and stuff. But for the most part, uh, what we're about to see here is straight cooking oil burning. Got a lot of air bubbles in the line, you can see there. So it's gonna take a second to get the system primed. I've just hooked this up. Um, unfortunately, I can tell right away that the wind is gonna be an issue. It's blowing directly back at that shed there, and the thermal energy coming off of this flame is no joke. It is enough to simply catch a structure on fire just by the thermal radiation coming off of it. So we're gonna have to move. This isn't gonna work, but nonetheless, I am glad to see that it's burning the oil. Probably looking at every bit of a megawatt there. I went ahead and moved everything and got us lined up properly with the wind, as you can tell by the smoke here. Still got a little couple of air bubbles in there. This thing lights up really easy. I was worried in the beginning of how hard it was going to be to light this thing up. Was I going to have to put a special ignition port inside of it? You know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's turning out to work pretty good. So you can see this cooking oil is putting off a lot of smoke. If this was burning inside a confined space, the residual heat from the combustion zone would most likely cook off that extra bit of smoke. But uh, from what I've seen, cooking oil has a little bit of smoke to it when you burn it no matter what almost uh, we are going for blue flame with this burner but I have never run a burner this big before so we kind of wanted to see what a blower of this power was capable of doing and it's really not doing anything at all right now because I don't realize this yet but the blower isn't even on Man, that is incredible. That is just ripping. If that thing had a better blower on it, we'd really be in there. Oh shit, it ain't even turned on. So I got so many things going on at once, I didn't even realize the blower wasn't turned on. So you can definitely there hear that go. metal popping. It got hot, a lot hotter in there real quick, inside a combustion chamber anyway. So if this thing had more blower power, we would uh, be seeing a blue flame. So what I'm gonna do is go and get a 3,000 cubic foot per minute blower and hook onto this bad boy. And um, hopefully the internal geometry of the combustion chamber will give us those two toroidal vortexes we need to maintain combustion inside the combustion chamber without just blowing it right out the other end. Freaking phenomenal, man. It just it doesn't even fake. look real. It's like it's fake. I don't know how to describe it in, in person. The flow rate is observable. You can see it dropping below that line there. <laughs> so this tank runs for quite a while though. You guys don't get to see the whole series of experiments here. Um, I edit out a huge amount of uh, what's going on when I'm doing this. Now this oil is definitely not giving us the right reading. There's no way that this one may go on right there. But because oil is uh, lighter, I don't know, maybe it makes anything, let things should sink blue flame in there. if it's lighter than water. So I don't know what's going on with the flow gate. The viscosity, that's what it is. The viscosity of this oil is hugging up against that little uh, indicator and it's reading because of the cooking oil effect. So it's just a little stickier than water. So I think that's what's happening. Even though the buoyancy of oil is less, I think the viscosity is what's doing that. Nonetheless, I'm glad to see this thing does have a good turn down rate. Um, you do need to be able to turn these things up and down depending on 
what type of power we're going to need for a maximum efficiency. I don't know exactly how much flame it's going to take to boil a thousand gallons of an hour, but I don't want to just be cranking out some standardized flame. So controllability is essential. I'm just kind of messing with that during this test. And it seems to uh, not care at all when you adjust the fuel or the air. And that means that it has a pretty stable combustion. We're about ready to light the ground on fire. And in the past, uh, I've found that it takes about a megawatt of heat to do that. Watch how easily this thing lights back up. I was kind of messing around with the turn down rate and went too far. A propane torch lights this thing right back up like it ain't nothing. We even had an explosion take place there that propagated deflagration up into the combustion chamber itself. So that's kind of cool that it's atomizing that well. It's an air atomizer. It's not the high pressure oil atomizer. And that does a lot better because it's more reliable for the simple fact you don't have filters and the possibility of clogging up, especially when you're using waste oils. Waste motor oil, for some reason, even after filtering, has some type of hairy, fibrous material in it. I believe it may be from the filter itself, but I don't know. All I know is it's uh, some tricky stuff to filter, and filters can really bog down your system. Man, this thing is just nuts. The ground's on fire. I think we better just uh, shut her down here for a burn hole down. But uh, nonetheless, that proves we're definitely over a megawatt. That pump's a 3.6 megawatt pump. So I would imagine that's about where we're at. Pretty phenomenal, nonetheless. So basically what I've learned in this test is that that blower is going to have to be way bigger. I'm thinking about going and buying a 3,000 cubic foot per minute uh, dust collector blower. I'm going to chop the whole back of this burner off and completely uh, modify the rear end of it to receive a larger blower. I don't have a speed control for the blower I have in mind, so what I'm going to do is just put uh, like an air valve on the intake to where you slide a piece of metal in front of the intake to adjust the airflow. Because I do want to be able to adjust the airflow. When we go to light this thing up, we're not going to be able to light it on full capacity, so it's going to have to have it for that. But um, anyway, just checking out the preheat system here. Stainless steel doesn't reveal its temperature very well. It's usually 100 to 200 degrees off. So it's hard to tell what we're really getting here. It is showing that the box is getting hot. Up to about 100 and some degrees. So I would imagine that means this thing's like 200 degrees. Because as I said, the recessivity uh, or recessivity, whatever that's called. I can't say it right. Uh, or the emissivity. Is, uh, the stainless steel give you a poor indication of extra temperature. You need a black substance. Okay, there's this uh, pump up full blast there. That should be 3.6 megawatts based on previous testing when I had the adequate flow gauge hooked up to the system. Um, I did actually build another burner with this uh, with much power in the past, but it didn't have a blower on it, and the size of the actual pre burner was not this big. It had a much smaller pre burner. But uh, this thing's just nuts. I don't know how to describe According to that gauge, we are well over one megawatt as far as flow goes. All right, so usually when you're at 1.6 liters per minute, that's right around 960 kilowatts if you consider the 10,000 watt per liter lower heating value of most liquid fuels. So I'm just kind of messing around with this thing, seeing how low we can get it to go down. Right around 800 kilowatts there. The same because I think the viscosity of this oil affects how much that flow rises. Even though it has less buoyancy, I think the viscosity drag is giving us a false indication. I have an appropriate flow gauge on the way. We obviously buried that one. Based on the settings of this pump, we were um, definitely over a megawatt. We were probably about three megawatts there based on the capacity of this pump. And uh, the last time I used it on a burner that was capable of reading the proper flow rates, that was about the max flow rate of that pump. The flame would get so hot you couldn't get by it, which is kind of what was going on here. Standing all the way behind this barrel. 
it's still uh, burning your face off in the wind. So that fireball puts off a lot more thermal radiation than you would think. It's kind of like standing too close to a campfire. Not enough air at all. The uh, air setup on this thing, completely inadequate, but that's kind of what this test device was gonna find out. We're gonna put a much bigger blower on this thing. This is a three stage, 101 cubic foot per minute, 1500 watt blower. And I believe it has a six PSI boost, which is higher than some regenerative blowers, which are coming in at like three PSI in some cases. So um, it's just not big bore enough. You can move a little bit of air with a lot of pressure, but I need a lot more air than what we've seen here. I'm going for blue flame on this, if you're wondering. So definitely gonna make uh, probably on the next one, the entire back of this box is gonna be an air duct fitting. So the blower is gonna be that damn big. It's gonna need it based on what I seen. So I'm glad to see how well it burnt the oil though. That, that uh, waste cooking oil will probably burn a little better even. Got a little more carbon in it. 